Launceston is a city nestled in the Tamar Valley in the north of Tasmania. It is the second most populated city in Tasmania and the fifth largest inland city within Australia. The Emergency Department of the Launceston General Hospital is the largest healthcare facility in northern Tasmania. Our patient population is often older and more complex in terms of multiple comorbidities, health literacy and socio-economic factors. We are a mixed regional emergency department that sees roughly 44,000 presentations per year. About 20% of these are paediatric presentations and our admission rate is 40%. Our catchment spans from Flinders Island to Campbelltown and from Deloraine to the East Coast. We also receive patients from outside these boundaries when they need specialist care not available in the Northwest region. We are a dynamic, enthusiastic and dedicated healthcare team ready to meet any challenge that comes through our doors. This is the main entrance for patients to our emergency department. As you walk through the doors, there is a COVID screening station for all visitors to the department. Masks are provided for all people. This is our waiting room where patients are triaged and clerked. There is a waiting room nurse and a clinical initiatives nurse offering care to patients in this area. All of our patients are triaged here according to the Australasian triage scale and undergo COVID screening. Administration clerks enter our patients' Medicare and other healthcare details. This is our paediatric waiting room. This is the main entrance to the emergency department. Ambulances with patients will enter this way. This is our ambulance receiving bay. We have three fully equipped resuscitation bays next to the ambulance entrance. 40 minutes. Yeah, 40 minutes. We'll go into three, but we're 40 minutes away, so yeah. we'll try, that'll be like 25. There is an x-ray gantry providing portable x-rays to all three cubicles. Resus 1 is a dedicated paediatric resuscitation bay. Dave, um, we've just had a Cat 1 call for a child in severe respiratory distress. Um, the need Emergency consultants provide direct supervision from 8am till midnight, seven days a week, and are available on call after hours. Resus bays are staffed by highly skilled resus nurses, and emergency registrars are rostered here every shift. Hi Jack, how are you doing? Good about how are you? You might have noticed we've got a number of QR codes um, dotted around the department. Yeah. They tend to be on the significant intervention boxes that we have in recess, mm -hmm. or sometimes on the poster on the wall in recess. Um, this is an example of one here. So basically what you want to do is grab your phone, just hover it over in the camera mode, 
yeah. select it, that will take you through to the website that's got the A memoir on it. Mm. It gives you instructions for the procedure. That's one example. Another example we've got is the poster on the wall um, that gives you instructions how to get immediate O neg blood. Yeah. So it's the same process, so you just hover over it yeah. in the photo mode um, and follow the link to the website and that will give you the instructions. Thank you. This is the shift coordinator's desk. Patient flow meetings are held here and it is the CAT1 assembly site. ED staff have a tight-knit team structure, allowing for a collaborative, supportive and positive environment. All our acute care beds have central cardiac monitoring. Here is one of our typical acute cubicles. Emergency staff have clear views of the resus bays and sicker patients in Zone 1. This is zone 2A. Two cubicles, eight and nine, are our designated safe rooms for mental health patients. They have dedicated support staff monitoring these rooms with the addition of closed circuit TV. Staff Station 2 is where we find our admitting inpatient teams. Our ED is a cohesive team consisting of nurses, doctors, allied health and support workers. Next, we will move to Zone 2B. Beds 11 and 12 are designed to be child friendly. Cubicle 15 has been repurposed as our PPE donning area due to COVID requirements. On the other end of Zone 2B, is our designated PPE doffing area. The corridor beyond 2B leads to our fast track area, isolation room one, out to the rest of the hospital, and also provides direct access to the radiology department. we have two isolation cubicles. Both isolation rooms are set up with resuscitation capabilities, attached toilets and audio-visual communication systems. These rooms are critically important during COVID-19 and other infection outbreaks. Isolation room two is closest to our resuscitation base. Our highly trained staff have been frontline operators in the response to the recent COVID-19 crisis. Ten resps, 30 
This is our fast track area. There is a supply room, five cubicles, and a staff station. This area can be repurposed to form an isolation area for high-risk patients during a pandemic. It is staffed by a multidisciplinary team, including ED doctors and nurses, GPs, nurse practitioners, and primary care physiotherapists. We have an eight bed face and lead emergency medicine unit. All cubicles have central cardiac monitoring. As well as our ED doctors and nurses, EMU is well supported by dedicated physiotherapists, occupational therapists and social workers. This is a high turnover area, with patients generally staying less than 24 hours. They are either discharged home, admitted to this hospital, or transferred to a rural healthcare facility. Okay, this yeah. time, so this I know, like, I don't think he's safe to go home. Two plus days here. He's not cope, like he wouldn't cope for home, he's busy. Now gives the history of this happening. And they always end up bouncing back. This is the eye and ENT room. In the eye room, we have our eye wash station. We have the slit lamp set up over here. All the ENT and ophthalmology tools up on the wall, as well as the Snellens chart, ophthalmoscope, and other tools for examining patients. The main purpose for doctors in the PAM room is for performing urine dipsticks as well as urine pregnancy tests for our patients. There are various storage areas throughout the department. This area stores the three ultrasound machines, level one rapid fluid infusers, non-invasive ventilation machines, and our beers block device. This corridor leads to various non-clinical spaces. The registrar room serves as a rest area and can be utilised as a space for meetings or education. It also houses educational models and materials for trainees. Why is the piriformis an important anatomical landmark? Because like so I actually never said I need that. Very good. So you can get stuff. Did you just cook? Next comes the ED meeting room, which is the main area for hosting educational sessions, departmental meetings, and formal clinical handovers. A little, a little LMA um, and the eye gels. You cannot ventilate these little lungs if you've got a stomach hole in those lungs. Okay? That's my routine. Yeah. Pre yeah. You have a view. She's got a heterogeneous mass possibly with air in there. Urology is seeing her, she's coming in, she's perfect. Cool. Beyond this are the office spaces for medical, nursing, administrative and ambulance personnel. Gilbert, our facility dog, lives here too. Gilbert brings happiness to our patients and staff alike. Our staff dining room provides a good sized kitchenette and food storage. This opens out into an outdoor courtyard to enjoy the sun and fresh air during breaks. We hope you've enjoyed our orientation video at the Launceston General Hospital Emergency Department. See you soon and hope you have a great day.